Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Something else a little bit different on the bench this week. We have got a select test test meter D3. Now this thing dates from the 1940s I would think and made by Salford, Salford Electrical Instruments up in Manchester in the northwest of England. Now, Salford Instruments were owned by GEC, which is why you can see the remnants of the GEC label here. And obviously GEC was a great big combine um, company consisting of loads of different companies who also made radios. Now this thing's a bit of a beast. Um, I'll show you an AVO 7 so you can see just how big thing is it's about the same width roughly the same width but uh, the select test is a little bit taller now it's got this beautiful Bakelite cabinet here with this very art deco molding here in it um, which features the reset button um, and the set zero it's got an X1 and X2 multiplier here or um, a divide by two I think they mean ohms set zero there. It's only got one ohms range. Um, it's got DC and AC amps on this side um, and voltage and the same on this side. And there's an interlock so you can't, uh, if I, I can't budge that. Oh, I can, sorry. Let me just turn this all the way around. It's a bit stiff. So at some stages you can't move around because of the interlock. So if I put it on, see it won't, that won't budge now. Now this one's active. I can't budge that out. So it is a little bit dirty. It didn't cost me a lot of money. Let's have a look at it from the side so you can see the moulding round here and this rounded bottom here we all like a perfectly rounded bottom um, and the two uh, terminals here negative and positive but it's quite a beast leather handle on the top and this flat back and I think these have some similarity um, in as much as they might have been on the same contract as the AVO Model D which was I think a wartime thing but certainly this is quite old I think the meter needle is slightly out of balance it zeroes perfectly when it's horizontal as this meter should be used but as you can see it it tilts over to one side so the actual meter movement itself probably needs a little bit of balancing and I would advise that's not something the average person could do very well. If you do get something like this, or or in fact an AVO, don't touch the meter. You can ruin them really, really quickly. They used to balance them in um, airtight cabinets because any form of draft uh, over the meter needle would... Um, um, unbalance the movement so the operator would um, have the movement in like a like a draft proof box and delicately balance the meter but that's something I can have a look at and I have ruined a couple of AVO meters myself that haven't been working I mean they didn't work anyway but just having a look at the meter and just um, you know see what I could do and how everything worked um, I have really trashed a couple of those in the past. So what I'm going to do is tip it over on its side. It's quite dirty. The plans for this one is just to test it, see if it works, give it a clean up and a polish, and then we shall uh, fix all this lost writing on the front here, try and get some paint into the GEC badge here, and generally just clean it up. The glass is actually filthy, um, but we can have a look at it. So let's get the back off and we can have a look at the inside first. 
I think these are the original screws with the spring washers still on them. You can see that little spring washer, very aged. The third screw down on the bottom right, I bring it back into shot. It looks like a bit of the back has cracked off there and it's missing three of the rubber feet. Now I've got some new rubber feet coming but they're not domed like this one here unfortunately. I couldn't find any. It takes one one and a half volt battery and we'll have a look at that in a minute. So there's the inside of the meter. You've got all the all the bobbins up the top here. You've got a transformer here. Um, these must be some sort of contact things. The whole movement comes out and you've got the current shunt board down the bottom here. And all these little bobbins will contain very fine Litz wire of specific resistances so the meter needle will rest at what voltage you uh, apply. And usually that sort of thing goes open because of its age and there's a lot of air in here um, and you guess what I've seen I've just opened that up for the first time it's a pubic hair on the inside of my brand new meter shall we dispose of that it's actually stuck well, there we go what a glorious gift so as you can see it's got a moulded in battery box here if I just undo the battery box here I've never owned one of these before I've wanted one for ages and this one came along at the right price so this looks like a hinged panel with two flying leads I don't know how that connected to you know when someone says a 1.5 volt battery this is a 1.5 volt battery so I'm not sure what form of battery would have gone in there I'll need to research that so that's that's actually a Paxlin panel that looks to be hinged just here at the back and these two springs, which one is slightly that's better, one is slightly bent are the battery contacts, and they would fit onto these two posts here. Interesting to see PVC wiring, PVC covered wiring. That says to me post war, but um, I don't know. I can't remember see, seeing PVC wiring pre-war, but I could be wrong. But the looms all nicely laced, look. So, let me get my camera set up. And it's got what look like brass. They were probably japanned. I can see some remnants of black paint around here. So they were probably black. But I can either paint them black or we can shine them up and a very thick and long leather handle much longer than the AVO meters and this one is still flexible but it obviously needs some leather food well I've pulled the actual movement section here there's four screws on the inside of the case one there, one there, two at the bottom, you take the terminals off and one side of the lead attachment which goes in here just three screws to take out we can have a good look at the movement itself now so one problem with these is I think if you need to press the, re the reset button sits here if, you, if your needle is jammed over I think 
when you press the reset button which is this bit here it is going to crush the needle if it's jammed yeah it is it's going to trash trash the needle anyway so what I'm going to have to do and you can if I just gently blow you can see if you're trying to set the meter movement up as I said earlier any form of draft you won't be able to set your movement up so clearly all this needs cleaning I'll do it to the side so you can see it a little bit better so clearly all this needs cleaning out especially around these knobs here quite dusty there's some felt rings I think they were felt there's certainly some form of rubber and they were glued and they sit inside the case like that to protect like dark as something to stop dust but whatever was on them whether some sort of flock or something was on them it isn't there now so if you do work on a meter never touch around here if you don't know what you're doing because you can severely screw it up I mean forever this one I just want to SLS 36 this one's got 40 written on the in red paint or red writing on the movement there is no date at all at AVOs you can find a date when the meter movement was made and if you look at the top this one's got SEI Salford Electrical Instruments Limited number 63215 delicacy and not getting your grubby mitts or your big fingers anywhere around here is the priority and what I need to do is go in and clean all these contacts let me get the meter up close so you can see without so if I put my hand on the back of the transformer you can see all these leaves here that move on a cam action on the big range switch here so it's like a cam, eccentric cam, and that will move these contacts. Now they will all need cleaning. Certainly much easier to work on an AVO. And the other thing to watch out, this has got quite a wide air gap. See the meter movement there with the coil sometimes you get bits of metal float down there and they can jam it up this one it's got quite a gap on it and there's the hairspring that turns re returns the needle back to zero you can see it contracting and expanding And there's more contacts here, some metal stud contacts for this range switch. And the usual treatment for those is just to put a dob of Vaseline on them. Very interesting. Let's have a look at the inside. Well, let's have a look at the back of the meter first. So there's all the resistance bobbins and they've all got their values taped onto them and I want to be careful with this, if I drop it it's game over and there's 
all the range, selection terminals, and the current transformer, I guess that is. And there is the, uh, the current shunt board. And the two things in the middle down the bottom there are the terminals. So I'm going to turn this over as quickly as I can because I do not want to drop that. So there we go, I'm going to gently go in with a squirrel hair brush and with the meter down like that just try and brush all this dust downwards and do a couple of brushes and then wipe away because uh, you really don't want this getting around here, they're really delicate. Quite interesting. But yeah, years of filth and dirt, especially around this meter look there, just brushing the dust away. And these two little springs here are the end stops for when you slam the meter needle over too hard. And one thing I'll need cleaning is the mirror here. It's absolutely filthy. But if I just... Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Right. Let's have a quick look inside the actual case. And then we'll end the video. So you can, I don't know if you can see little black spots in here so I'm going to clean that out get all the dust out the bottom of the case and decide what I'm going to do about these because they're there as dust protection and they're not really anymore they might have been some sort of foam I, I don't know I don't know to be honest but they must have been a tight foot around these range switches because uh, sorry range switches because I guess the idea was to make this reasonably weatherproof because they would be used out of doors and here's the that you can see that but that's the reset for the cutout and that thing there is the needle adjustment for the zero which connects onto this bit here and you always leave that in the same place so it all, go, all goes back on and doesn't bend this little arm here so the easy thing now is for me to go and clean this case out get it all back together maybe glue that bit back on the others seem fairly firm and then in part two we'll get on and clean all the dust out of this meter and give it a bit of a service right thanks for watching and um, yeah see you soon just quickly before I go I'd mentioned earlier in the video that I, it had one resistance range this meter actually has two I just didn't spot that one there's no um, no paint infill left I just didn't spot that and I've also managed to reset the uh, the cutout button here which was protruding out but in the next video we'll get inside again and give it a good clean out and clean the contacts etc alright thanks for watching finally